see people coming together now and like trying to make sure everyone's taught the word of God. I memorized John 3:16 as early as I can remember. All right, hey everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning. Welcome to church. My name's Jesse. It's always a privilege to be with you. How about that, that weather out there? It's like Ohio remembered it's Ohio, you know? <laughs> and like, oh, yeah, I forgot. It's not supposed to be sunny all the time here. Uh, but it kind of feels like Ohio out there, right? But uh, hey, I'm glad that you're here. If you're new with us, a special, special welcome to you. Glad that you're here. Grateful for you. And I hope that, that it feels like home. I hope that you, you feel connected quickly here because we love you, we value you, and we're thankful that you're here. We're in a message series on following Jesus. Before we jump into that, I just want to say tomorrow is Veterans Day. And, and I want to just uh, express my thanks. Yeah, for sure. So... You know, coming out of an election week, an election year, I just think there, there's a lot of reasons to be grateful. And one of the reasons in this country is for the men and the women who have served this great country of ours. And so what I want to do, if you are a veteran and you're comfortable uh, and you're in this room, would you stand so we can recognize you and honor? If you're, if you're a veteran, you're comfortable. Go ahead and just stand so we can thank you. It's incredible. And I just want to say thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Following Jesus, a message series that we're in, it's really about intentionality. It's really about, you know, we have to be intentional about accepting Jesus, but then daily we have to be intentional about following Jesus. And for us as a church, you know, you'll hear around here that we exist to bring people closer to God. And we believe that that that's not just for inside of these walls, but we believe that our impact, that our light can shine on people across the world, through our community, through our nation, and, and across the world. And so we're gonna talk about, in these next three weeks, missions. We're gonna talk about a few things, a few of our ways that, that we are passionate and why we are passionate about reaching the world for Jesus. And if you give to this church at all, if you give to the general fund, there, there's a portion of all giving that goes out. There's a portion of all giving that goes into the community, that goes into the nation, that goes across the world to organizations, to missionaries, to, to relationships that we have with people that are on this same mission that we are on here. And so our missions is something that we're very, we're very passionate about. And inside of missions lives Friendsgiving. It's something that we call, it's an initiative. It's a season that we're in here in these next three weeks. And Friendsgiving is something that is just an opportunity for, for those of us who are passionate about missions, that are passionate about more resources getting to our mission partners. And so Friendsgiving is set up in such a way that, Every dollar in to Friendsgiving is a dollar out. And so when you give to General Fund for this church, you know, a portion of that goes to missionaries. It sustains them and keeps them going. But Friendsgiving is over and above. Friendsgiving is something on top of that. And so you've received a resource on your way in today. And that, that's two things. One, that's some information. But it's also an invitation. It's an invitation to pray. And just ask God in these next three weeks as we talk, about missions, just ask God in these next three weeks, God, how do you want me to be involved? What do you want me to do about the need across the world, the need for Jesus across the world? And how do you want me to be involved? On November 24th, it's, it's two more Sundays from now, we're gonna all together just give an offering, our friends giving offering, and 100% of those resources are gonna go to our mission partners across the world. And so my invitation is simply to pray, to just pray and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And I believe that we share 
his mission, and we also share it with people that are compelled by God all across the world. We actually have some, some friends here, some missionaries here in our house today, and friends of mine that run an organization. They lead an organization called Samaritan Aviation, and we've been partnering with them as of recent. And, and Mark and Kirsten Palm, would you guys stand so they can put a face to the name right here? Come on, let them know you love them. We're so thankful for you guys. And what I love about you is you are so consistent and you are so steady with what God has called you to do. And the assignment that is on your life, there's like no wavering from that. You know your lane, you're staying in your lane and you're doing everything that you can do to get done what God has placed on your life. And I'm so thankful for that. And I wanna give you guys a snapshot of Samaritan Aviation. And Mark's gonna join me on platform for the rest of this message. But before he does, take a look at this. Thank you. There's a parable in the New Testament that Jesus spoke of that talks about what a good Samaritan is and how we're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves and go above and beyond even when it's not expected. But Jesus also said, you know, what you do to the least of these in my name, you do as unto me. And that's really the goal for all of us is to be the hands and feet of Jesus. The ministry plays a vital role in helping villagers stay healthy and alive. There is a hospital ministry that serves the patients who are flown in by providing food, clothing, and support during their stay. The team also delivers medical supplies to remote aid posts, provides quick response when there is a natural disaster or sickness outbreak, and sets up community health programs that have a lasting impact on these remote villages. By meeting the people's physical needs, Samaritan's staff is able to tend to their spiritual needs as well. All right, I'm gonna pray real quick, guys. God, thanks for today. Pray for a safe flight, pray for this medicine to work. We're going into these remote areas. People are curious, they're like, why are you here? What are you guys doing here? And then we're able to share with them who Jesus is and why we do what we do here. People are seeing the idea of grace in action and the idea of a free gift with no strings attached. And that's really who we are. We're, we're in there offering a free service. We're saving their life. They don't owe us anything. So they get on the left side now. <laughs> they do what Jesus modeled for us. That's what Samaritan Aviation is all about. Thank you all. Thank you. Isn't that powerful? Come on. So like I said, this is my friend Mark Palm, who, who is uh, CEO, co-founder of Samaritan Aviation, and you've been doing that for how many years now? Yeah, next year I'll be celebrating 25 years. 25 years, yeah. come on. And, and you know, this guy, he's been all over the world, right? He, he's seen, I, I think, every point of this earth. Uh, but Ohio's gotta be probably the nicest place you've been, or tell me about that. Well, I can tell you, I woke up this morning and I felt totally at home. Yeah. Not really, but it's so great to be here. <laughs> Where I feel at home is here in this church right now. Come on. Where we're worshiping God this morning. The sun's out in here right now. Come on. And just so grateful yeah. to be here with all of you guys just worshiping. And God is good, and we're here this morning in his house. Amen. Amen. It's awesome. Well, Mark's going to help me preach today, if that's all right. And, uh, and so we're, we're going to go through kind of a message, kind of back and forth a little bit, hear a little bit more about him but also hopefully kind of stir up something in us. And so I want to talk today about this, this concept marked by love. Get it? I didn't get it the first time I heard it. Right, right. His, his name's Mark, everybody. They have to put up with these kind of jokes all the time. Uh, so you can pray for them. It's this idea that, that we're changed by love, right? When, when we get experience, when we experience God's love in our life, like it, that does something to us. It, it changes us. And at some point in all of our, our walks in our life, we, we reach this level of maturity where we're not just all about us, where, where we understand that God's love is for us. It's not, and our eyes go from inward to outward. And we start seeing other people and we start seeing a value on other people. And it's because we understand God's love for us. First John 4, verse 9 through 11, it, it talks about this, is that God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son. And since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other, right? We're marked by love. We're, we're, we're different because God has loved 
us. And so Mark, as a, as a missionary, I mean, you spent a lot of time in Papua New Guinea. You raised your family there. You raised your kids there. Uh, but you, had, you have a, there's something different about you than maybe some people in the rest of the world. And so why do you do what you do there in Papua New Guinea? Yeah, you know, for, for me, it started as a 10-year-old when I accepted Jesus. And I don't know how old you were, Jesse, when you had that moment. I was five, but that's no big deal. Yeah, okay, so fine. you beat me. He's always yeah. competitive. He's always competitive. <laughs> but that's what changed my life. And I, and I hope each of you in this room has, has, can remember and look back to that moment in time where God changed your life. But that's where it began. And I believe, you know, the first two commandments, love the, God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, your mind, and strength. And the second one is love your neighbor as yourself. You can't love your neighbor as yourself without doing the first one. And that's really where God good. filled my life uh, with his love. And I've just had a, a passion for, for people to hear Jesus. And my wife and I, uh, just even when we were dating, it was this idea that you know, people in remote places deserve a chance to hear about Jesus. Yeah. They deserve a chance to live physically and for us for a chance to share who Jesus is so they can live eternally. Yeah, and that's, that's what good. drives us. But you know, you can imagine, uh, we, when we went to Papua New Guinea uh, the first time we moved over there, uh, our kids were three, uh, four, five, and seven. Wow. And the months leading up to the, to the time we moved, we'd be in a church like this, and after the service was over, uh, we'd be standing uh, in, in an aisle like this, and someone would come up to me, I've got three kids holding on to us, and they would say, aren't there cannibals in Papua New Guinea? <laughs> now, can you imagine trying to go home and explain to your kids that you're moving them over to the remote part of the world. They don't, yeah. They're not cannibals there. But uh, like Papua New Guinea's kind of known for that, right? Dangerous, uh, last frontier. And so yeah. uh, one time my wife put it well when people would say, hey, aren't you guys scared? There's, there's, there's tribal fighting over there. There's sicknesses. You're taking your family away from their grandparents and all of these, these challenges, right? Yeah. And uh, my wife looked at this them one time and she said, you know, the safest place is to be in the center of God's will. Come on. And that's the truth. And that's where if God has you in the center of his will, it doesn't matter where you're at. And so for us, the kids knew it was a passion of ours that people deserve a chance. There's precious people all around the world that need to hear about Jesus. So they were kind of raised with that DNA. And so yeah. when it was time to get on the plane, they got on and were, were excited about the it. opportunities. Um, they had no idea what they were getting into, and I don't think we did either at the time, but it's been an amazing journey. God's continued to bless uh, our family. Our kids are doing amazing now. They're all out of the house, which is amazing as well. <laughs> but uh, just, yeah, God's been so faithful to our family, but it starts with that, with that really passion that God gave us when he filled us with his Holy Spirit to make sure people around the world could hear yeah. about his name and have a chance for eternity. I love that. There's no safer place than to be in the center of God's will. That's good. I don't know if you're taking notes, but I, I should be writing that, that one down right there. That's good. It's my wife. And, and when you're, thanks, Kirsten. You guys want to swap places here? Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> and so when you're marked by love, you're changed by love, I, I think one of the things is, is you begin to be connected to hope, right? You, you can see the hope for yourself, and then you start to see hope for other people. I love the name Samaritan Aviation. And I've heard you tell the story and how you connect, even in the video, you mentioned it. And I love in, in that story, uh, the, the verse in Luke 10, 33, it says this, it says, as a Samaritan, he journeyed and he came to where he was, right? The guy in the ditch, right? Different nationality of him, different than him. All the other people were passing him by. You've probably read the, the story of the good Samaritan before. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. You don't have to be in that ditch. He could see the hope in front of that guy. Because I think when, we're, when we are the way that Mark's talking about, when we're, we come to realize God's love for us, when he fills us with his spirit, it changes how we see things. And we start to see people differently. We don't see people for their sin. We don't, we don't see people. We see more than their sin. We see more than their past. We see more than their nationality. We, we, see more than, we see more than their ability to add value to us, right? We, we can see beyond that. Often we have that filter of, of we just see people and their ability to add value to us. But I think when God does a work in our heart and he connects us to hope, then we see people beyond that. We see people more than their ability to add value to us because we can say, man, you're in the ditch, but you don't have to stay in the ditch. 
And I think what, what I want you to understand is this, that, that we see the hope in front of people when we see the value of people, right? We, we can see the hope in front of people when we actually see value for people. Because, and that's what God does. He changes our eyes. And we're not just consumed with ourselves, but we're, we're, we're turned out now. We're, we're outward. And we can see people and see the value of people, whether it's in our community, whether it's in our nation, whether it's across the world. Literally, the other side of the world is New Guinea. And so, Mark, when you went that first time, or how did you connect? Because I know you're passionate. You're, you're a pilot. So how did that connection happen between a passion of yours and need for people that you saw value in? Yes, you know, uh, my grandfather was a World War II pilot, um, and my father was a minister. So I grew up with five boys in the family, and we traveled around quite a bit, starting different churches. And, but when I was 13, my f- family moved to Santa Cruz, California, and my dad ran a homeless mission. And so it was the first time in my life where I, I could connect this idea of helping somebody where they're at physically for a chance to share about spiritual things and about who Jesus is. Mm. And so having that moment as a teenager, just working, feeding the homeless, giving them a blanket when it's cold, uh, and just having that, that, that opportunity to serve and live my faith out for an opportunity to share Jesus. I was 16, I went down to Mexico with my church youth group. First time I ever saw another culture. Saw people living uh, just on the streets and uh, and cardboard boxes and literally no, no hope at all in some of these areas. And we had a chance to build a house for a family and spend a week down there. And, you know, one of the things that we did as, as, as a youth group is every morning we'd go out and read a devotional. And so Psalm 139 was, was the devotion for the week. And I'll never forget, I'm 16, I'm sitting on this old abandoned well reading Psalm 139. And God just spoke to me. And it was, it was like he was sitting right there, Jesse. And What I heard from him, he said, Mark, I want you to use your passion for people and aviation to share my love to a remote part of the world. Wow. What would you do if you heard that at 16? Yeah. Maybe some of you had, have. But I'll tell you, I went back to California and I'm I'm like, I guess I'm not gonna be a commercial or military pilot anymore. I guess it's time to figure out what I need to do to get prepared to serve somebody in the remote part of the world. I ended up going to Hope Sound Bible College in Florida. You were very familiar with that. Uh, and uh, had a chance to meet a, a friend there who was born in Papua New Guinea, and the two of us found ourselves over there in 1994, 30 years ago, living with the people and just seeing what the needs were and hearing stories uh, of people dying, trying to get to the only hospitals that are days and days away. And God gave us a vision, and the vision was, can we uh, turn a three-day trip to the only hospital into a one- or two-hour flight, and could we do that for no cost? Wow. And that was the vision. And yeah. we were young. I had long hair. I surfed. I looked like a surfer. This was a, a long surfer. time ago. This was a long yeah. time ago. And, yeah. and uh, you know, honestly, we, just a quick story. We took a photo of ourselves and our, uh, with our wives in front of someone else's airplane. And I had my, <laughs> my mentor was a, uh, was a printer of, at a printing company. Somebody donated a really nice logo. And I, we mailed this out because we didn't have... Uh, we had Rolodexes back then. We mailed this out to 330 people. And I thought, wow, we're going to get an amazing response. Yeah. I think we raised $330. <laughs> but we were so young, and God had called us that it didn't matter. And so we just kept telling the story and finally found ourselves there in 2010 with an airplane starting the ministry. And God is just, it's God to be praised. He's faithful to the call when he gives it to us. If we're faithful to respond to the call, he's faithful to be there for us. At every step of the way, and, and here we are this morning yeah. talking about it. There's something to say about that, though. I mean, you felt the call at 16 years old. You went over in 1994, but it wasn't until 2010 that you were able to actually get to work. You were actually to get a plane in there and do what you felt God wanted you to do for 16 years before that. That's incredible. That's faithfulness on your part. You know, to, to hear God's call, to hear an assignment that says, this is your, your assignment. We talk about it all the time. Like, we all have the same calling. We're, we're called to people, but we have different assignments, right? My assignment is different than Mark's assignment. Mark's assignment is different than your assignment. And often what God will do is, is say, here's a passion of yours and here's a need for people. And, and he'll help you intertwine those together and where you can be most effective for God. 
where, where you can take something that you're passionate about and, and you can see the value in people in the hope that somebody, maybe it's in your family, maybe it's in your school or in your community. And, and what, what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna be then compelled to action. So I believe that we're marked by love because we're connected to hope, but we're also, point number two is we're compelled to action. And, and we wanna be people of action. In fact, over the summer, our kids took action with Samaritan Aviation. And so you've heard about our vacation Bible experience over summer. And what we did is we got, every year they pick a missionary or a mission organization, a partner of ours, and they, they raise money for that organization. And so we set in front of our, our kids this year that the need for audio Bibles because you fly into these, these remote villages and, and I don't know how many of them can read or whatever, but, and it's a different language, but there's audio Bibles where they can listen and have access to the word of God. And our kids rallied around that and we were able to raise over $12,000 to give for audio Bibles over the summer because our kids took action because they, they saw and recognized the need and they, and they took action. This week, actually, in these next three, three weeks through Friendsgiving, our kids are rallying around the need for God's word again. One of the big problems in this world is that we have more languages than we do translations of God's word. And so through a company, an organization called Illuminations, our kids are raising money to get more and more languages their own Bible that we can be a part of that as a church. And our kids are, are compelled to do that and to take action because the reality is God wants his people to be conduits. And so there's gonna be people that need the love of Jesus and it's gonna come through you. You're gonna be the conduit. There's gonna be people that need the hope that you have, but they're only gonna get it when it comes through you. First John 4, the next verse says in verse 12 says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Because just like Mark is a conduit of hope and action and God's love, so are you, so are you. And so Mark, I know there's, there's a lot of opportunity there and you talked about uh, why hospitals are so far away. I mean, because transportation looks different there than it looks here, right? But tell us a little bit about that. Tell us about some more needs, some opportunity that you have right now. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, we've been serving for 15 years now in, in full-time with an airplane and, and uh, in, in the north side of Papua New Guinea. What people don't realize is Papua New Guinea is the second largest island in the world. So it's land mass, size of California, uh, half the island is Papua, half the island is Indonesia. Just on the Papua side, there's 14 million people. And so, and through the middle of this island, there's 14,000 foot mountains. And the need is, there still needs others, other areas. We're working on a 700 mile river right now, uh, but we've been hearing stories of people dying on the other side of the island, across the mountains, in swamp areas where there's no roads, rivers, hmm. hundreds of thousands of people living uh, days away from help. And so God's called us to respond to that call that we've been getting from the other side to say, please come and help. You guys have shown you can do this on the north side of the island. Can you come help us on the south side of the island? I wanna show a quick video to kind of give you an idea of where we're headed as an organization. I'm here in Gulf Province at Caputa Hospital. I'm with Barb Calvert. And uh, Barb, how long have you guys and your family been in this area of the Gulf Province? I first came up in 1979. And um, so I've been here living since 1981. So I would guess you understand the challenges of yes. what the people are dealing with here in these remote communities. Yes. So what would it mean for this area to have a plane and have some uh, aviation serving the the these people? I think it's really, really valuable because um, like transport is a big problem. Around here, it's all river transport. So sometimes like we've got remote villages, they pedal for days and it's really, really hard. So um, it's just amazing having a plane, you know. 
We're really excited. Uh, Kapuna Hospital has invited us officially to come here and partner with them as well as the Gulf Province. The need is still so great here. They've got an amazing facility, but how do we get patients to get here is the question. And that's really what Samaritan is here to, to answer that question and say, yes, we can get those patients in quickly when there's emergencies. And we can also get nurses out for patrols. There's a discipleship training school here. We want to be able to get God's word out to these remote communities as well and be able to use a, a tool that God's given us, a seaplane will allow us to do that quickly and efficiently. And so we're really excited as we continue to talk, work through agreements and what it looks like as we, as we partner together in the years to come. You know what I love about that video? I love the guy in the background, like trying to catch a glimpse inside the plane. He's like trying to peek his head, seeing what the plane is all about. But go ahead. Yeah, no, I, guys, I want to tell you a story of a person. It's, it's a lot of times we talk about the people. I don't want to talk, tell you about uh, Kesslin. Uh, we had a chance to pick her and her daughter up uh, a few months ago. Uh, they were both struggling from tuberculosis. She had drug-resistant TB. Uh, we don't deal with that here in the States, thankfully. But when you have drug-resistant TB, you, you need medicine for, for several months. And so she came in. She was on death's door, but she started getting strength. And one of the amazing parts of our ministry is we have four Papua New Guineans that we've uh, helped to uh, disciple that go in every day. And we have this program called Kingdom of Glory, uh, which is a creation of Christ model. And so they're able to go in and share Jesus every day. There's videos in their language uh, they, they could discuss. And, and so each of our patients are getting these lessons, depending on how long they're in the hospital, and a, a chance to hear a clear gospel message. Well, Kesslin was in there for, for many weeks, and so as she was slowly gaining her strength back, we were able to continue to sh share Jesus through these lessons. We went through 70 lessons with Kesslin. Wow. She accepted Jesus. And the day after she, she viewed the last lesson and talked through the last lesson on, on uh, creation to Christ, she unexpectedly passed away. And I can tell you it was tough on our staff because they had really grown to love this, this lady and her daughter. And it was hard. But, you know, as we reflected on that, we exist to, sh to save someone's life to have a chance to share Jesus so that they can live for eternity. Yeah. And this lady had a chance. We brought her out. Even though she didn't live more than about three months, she had a chance to hear a clear gospel message and respond to that. And now she's up in heaven right. celebrating with the yeah. angels. And that's why Samaritan Aviation exists. That's why we're here. Yeah. And I'm so excited about these opportunities that we have to go and reach another several hundred thousand people that need to hear about Jesus, that need to, to be saved when they're sick, when they get bitten by a snake or they have any other type of pregnancy complication or sickness, that we have the opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus to be grace in action in a culture that doesn't have a word for grace. This wow. idea that we can come and offer a free service. And you know, our flights were up 40% last year. We brought a third airplane over last year. We, saved, we flew in almost 400 critically ill patients with a chance to share Jesus with them, as well as the medicine delivery, all the other things that we do. But what that means is, you talk about opportunities, but it's also challenges. We need people to be praying about coming over as staff members. We need churches like this to come alongside of us and partner yeah. with us as our financial needs grow and our staffing needs grow. But God's given us a mission and the, the need is great. And so we're just so grateful to be part of what God's doing in Papua New Guinea. And we're grateful for each of you and this church for being part of what God's doing in Papua New Guinea. Yeah. Well, we love being a part of it. In fact, today, just to to make a, a small dent into that, you know, from, from all of your giving, we're able to, to just give you 10 grand today. And we wanna do that to, to put towards more flights, more people. What did you say that lady's name was? Kesslin? Kesslin, yeah. Praise God, man. Job well done. You know, it's one thing that if we can extend people's lives, but it's another thing if we can give them life for eternity through Jesus, man. And, and so it's an honor to, to stand beside you your organization and, and help any way that we can. And so, and I know you guys will be praying. And right now, actually, if you could just extend your hand forward, you and I will stand up. I wanna pray for you. 
And we just wanna cover Samaritan Aviation in prayer and cover Mark and Kirsten. Heavenly Father, today, we just recognize your plan, your plan for us, that, that you have asked the church to partner, to co-mission with you to reach the world for Jesus. And Lord, we wanna be people that, that see outside of our walls, to see outside of ourselves. And, and we ask today, we lift up Samaritan Aviation to you, their staff members, their pilots, their, their ministry teams, their medic teams, God, and also Mark and Kirsten today, God, that, that your anointing, that your favor, your blessing would be on them and that you would multiply their efforts and that more and more people would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ through this organization, through this mission. We love you in Jesus' name, amen. All right, come on, give it up for them one more time. You know, I, I just wanna be clear about Friendsgiving and, and what it is, is again, it's, we're doing missions with all money that comes in, but Friendsgiving is that over and above. And if, if, if it's got your name on it, that's what you need to pray. You know, God, is, is this how you want me to contribute? Is this my assignment to contribute to this? And, and because organizations like Samaritan Aviation are out there making a difference and reaching the world for Jesus. And, and the reason is we believe that, that God has a plan for all of us to be involved. And I believe for you to be involved. And you know, we, we serve a God that's gonna return. Jesus will return. And the reason that he's not, he's very clear in 2 Peter chapter three. The reason that he's not is because of his patience. It says this, it says, the Lord's not being slow about his promise to return. Now he's being patient for your sake. He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent, everyone to turn, everyone to come to that saving knowledge of Jesus. And so as you pray, maybe your prayer is, God, what work do you wanna do in my life? And maybe today there, there's a turn in your life towards something that God wants to direct you towards. And maybe that's a, a turn of salvation. Maybe God is waiting on you Maybe that you're ready, you've tried your life, your way, and you're ready to try God's, his way. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, today, we just wanna, we wanna surrender all of our efforts. We wanna surrender our lives to you and say, use us. Use us, Lord. We wanna be used by you. We want your plan for our lives. Lord, today we know that that you are a God that is faithful. And we know that you are interested in each and every one of us. Lord, we think back of that first scripture in 1 John. It says, you loved us so much that you gave your one and only son for us so that we might be right with you. Lord, today, if there's anybody here in this room that, that wants to get right with you, that wants to, that saving grace that is offered so freely, it's not something that we work for, it's not something that we earn, it's a gift that you give, Lord. Today, soften our hearts to your grace. With heads bowed and eyes closed, nobody's looking around today, I just want you to, to keep your eyes closed and just lock in with God and just, just lock in with him and, I wanna ask you if there's anybody here today that wants to start fresh, that wants to start new, that wants to surrender to his plan, to his grace, would you just put your hand up so I can pray for you today? Yeah, I see it. I see it. God's got mercy. God's got grace. God's got a fresh start. His mercies are new each and every day. And also, if, if God is stirring in you that, that maybe you're feeling an assignment, that you're feeling a call on your life to be a part of his work, you can put your hand up today as just a recognition of that inside, that work that's going on on the inside that you, you sometimes when you match that external movement of what God is stirring and doing inside, Lord, I just pray for, for you, for you, your peace to just fall on this place, that you would wash us new and afresh, God, that, that you would make us new, Lord. And sometimes we, we are tempted to feel like we don't have much to contribute, 
but I'm thankful for your design of the church as a community where, where my little part, their little part, Mark's little part, all of our parts go together to move the mission and the gospel forward today, God. And we just put our faith in you. We put our trust in you today that even if we don't recognize it or we see it, we trust you. We surrender to you. We put our faith in you. God, we believe that, that you are in charge, that you are in control. God, we just surrender our lives, our hearts, our missions, our hands, our feet to you for you to use them as you see fit.